What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new portable power station. This is the Jackery Explorer 1000 V2. Taking a look at some of the specs, this has a 1070 watt hour LiPo 4 battery, a 1500 watt power handling with a peak of 3000 watts, a 400 watt solar charging input, UPS function, and is very lightweight at only 23.8 pounds. So taking a look at the power station itself, this is definitely a nice looking power station. As you can see right away, you can tell it's a Jackery by all of its bright orange accents, which do carry across the power station. Construction wise, it does feel well made as the plastic feels nice and sturdy. And according to the specs, this is also shock and fire resistant. One thing I immediately noticed is the size of its power station because this is definitely very compact for a 1000 watt hour unit. I own quite a few power stations of this capacity or a similar size and this is definitely the smallest one I've seen so far. A lot of power stations have a handle but typically they stick out in some way whether that be the sides, the back or the top. But as you can see this one folds in which in the end makes it a lot more compact. And the inside of this handle also has a nice rubber grip which makes it very comfortable to carry as well. So taking a look at the ports right over here you have your DC car cigarette lighter port and this can do 12 volts 10 amps. Right below that you have two USB-C ports one does 30 watts the other does 100 watt and then you also have a USB-A port which does a max of 18 watts. Coming over here you have three AC output ports and as I said earlier this can put out a total of 1500 watts. And last but not least, right up here, you have a built-in LED light, which has low, high, and strobing modes. On the highest mode, it does get pretty bright, so this is going to be good to light up a small area. Maybe you're working on something, and then it's also bright enough to provide good light in a tent or room in your house as well. Coming to the side, you have a large orange vent, and it does have one of these on the other side as well. Over here, you have two DC inputs, and then you have your AC charging port. But as you can see, this one is built into the power station itself. So you can just use this cable and charge directly from that. Taking a look at the screen, this is a nice and clear screen with a lot of contrast. So right here in the middle, you got your battery percentage. Then you also have an orange graph that goes around it. Then you have your input voltage on this side, output voltage on this side. And then it'll also show you the calculations, whether that be how much power is left based on the load that's running or how much time it has left till it's fully charged. Coming right up here, you see a Bluetooth icon and that's because this power station has app connectivity. And one thing I really like is it doesn't just have Bluetooth app connectivity, but you can also connect to it through Wi-Fi as well. So this means that regardless if you're down the block at the store or even across the world, as long as you have Wi-Fi access, you could check on and control your power station. Last but not least, inside this power station, you have a UL certified LifePo4 battery that's rated to maintain 70% capacity for 4,000 charges. So even if you use this every single day, you're still gonna get 10 years out of this power station. And then if you're someone like me that doesn't use the power station every single day, then you should get closer to 15 years out of this power station. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the inverter. As I said earlier, this has a power handling of 1500 watts and a peak of 3000 watts. When it comes to everyday technology, that's going to be a complete walk in the park for this power station as those really don't draw that much. But let's go ahead and hook up quite a few things here and see what we can get it up to. So first off, I have my 14 inch MacBook Pro. Plug it into the USB-C port. I think this only draws about 80 watts at the max. It has a good amount of battery right now, so I'm not sure how much it's gonna draw. So it looks like it's only drawing about 50 watts. If it was low battery, it would draw about 80 at the most. I got a Bluetooth speaker. Again, likely not gonna draw that much, but let's go ahead and add that in. I have a 2000 milliamp power bank. Let's go ahead and add that as well, up to about 60 watts now. Over here, I have a Lenovo gaming laptop. This has an AC adapter. I think it has about 60% battery, so hopefully it draws on the upper side. So it looks like we're now drawing about 110 watts. If these were both low battery, this would probably get up to about 2, 250 at the most. So like I said, with regular technology, I'm sure you would max out every single port on this power station and you would still be well under about 500 watts, most likely even less than that. So like I said, regular technology is definitely no problem for this power station. So whether that be your laptop, camera, drone, cell phone, whatever you might have, definitely going to power it no problem at all. 
All right, let's go ahead and test this with something that takes a lot more power. Right here, I have a 1500 watt electric heater. The max on this is 1500 watts, so this should put it to that maximum limit. Let's see if it can hold on to that as advertised. So let's start it on low mode. So on low, the heater's pulling about 900 watts. Let's switch it up to medium. Now at about 13, 1400 watts, it's probably gonna settle back down a little. All right, so it's settled about 1200 watts. Let's put it up to number three. This is probably gonna set it over 1500 watts, but let's see what the jackery does. So on mode three, it looks like the heater is pulling a little over 1300 watts. So I went ahead and added a USB device and that should put us to that 1500 watt limit. As you can see, it's actually running 1600 watts right now and not shutting off, 1700 watts. So definitely very impressive. A lot of power stations, as soon as you get slightly over its limit, it'll just automatically shut off. But this one, we are well over its limit and it's still going strong. A little over 1500 watts. So now settling about 1500 watts, a little bit under. Let's see if it can hold on to that wattage. So it's been about a minute now and still going strong. So as advertised, it can do 1500 watts. And as you saw, it can actually do more than that as well, which is always a good thing to see. So 1500 watts may not sound like a lot, but this can actually run a lot of things. In fact, almost every single item in a regular household is usually under 1500 watts. There's a few exceptions, but it's very, very slim as a regular household outlet can only run up to 1800 watts. So whether you have a electric cooktop, microwave, power tools, a heater, or pretty much anything else in your house, this should be able to run it. So all in all, this is going to be good for camping, home backup power, outdoor events, road trips, or pretty much any other situation where you might need portable power. And as I said earlier, for the capacity and power handling, this is definitely a very compact unit, which is going to make it a whole lot more easier to transport and store as well. When it comes to charging, this does have an emergency supercharging option, which can charge the power station from zero to 100 in only one hour. I did test this out and it did run at that 1500 watts. And another thing I like on this power station is it's also very quiet as well. When you're charging at that 1500 watts, the fan does kick on, but overall it's very quiet, especially compared to a lot of power stations out there that are just much louder. All right, so along with the power station, I also have their Solar Saga 200 solar panel, and this is a bifacial panel, meaning it has solar panels on both sides of the panel. So this is going to be a lot more efficient compared to a single side panel. As you can see, this is a foldable panel. Most foldable solar panels have the little buckle here to get a clip on with a button. This is just so much easier as it has built in magnets. So you just fold it up and it'll automatically grab and hold itself in place. So definitely a lot more convenient and easier to fold up and put away. To carry it, you have this handle up top, which makes it very easy to carry as this is pretty lightweight for a 200 watt panel at only 13.67 pounds. Another thing I like about this solar panel is the cable that it includes. So this side connects to the solar panel. This is the side that goes to your power station. As you can see, it does have an adapter to fit two different sizes. But right here in the middle, you have this little breakout box and this has built-in USB ports. This has a USB-C and USB-A. So directly from the solar panel, you can charge your cell phone or other USB devices as well. All right, so this is what the panel looks like unfolded. As I said earlier, it has panels on the front and then it also has more panels on the back. Right now, it's a very gloomy day. And as you can see, we have basically no sun at all. So if I were to connect this right now, I would probably get about 10, 15 watts. So it's not even worth displaying. But on a good sunny day, I was able to get about 182 watts from the solar panel, which is overall pretty efficient for a 200 watt panel. According to the specs, if you have one of these panels, you can charge the power station within 7.5 hours directly from the sun. And then if you have two of them, that'll make it much quicker at 3.8 hours. And as I said earlier, this is a pretty lightweight panel. So using two of these will still keep your setup pretty lightweight and portable. All right, so I drained this power station from 100% to zero with about a 1,100 watt load and it put out a total of 976 watt hours. Doing the math that gives this unit a usable capacity of 91.2%. Most power stations of this size put out about 80 to 85% on average. So this is definitely one of the better power stations out there. So as I said earlier, this does have app connectivity, which is both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. 
In most situations, it's gonna be better and easier to connect through Wi-Fi, but if you're out somewhere that doesn't have Wi-Fi connection, that's where it's gonna be better to use the Bluetooth instead. So taking a look at the app, up here you have your percentage. It also has that graph, same thing like the power station. You have your total input with the time remaining to charge. Output, also time remaining to charge. You can also turn on and off the different functions on the power station. Your light control buttons, your screen control time, you can set it to stay on for two hours, turn off after two minutes, or turn it off immediately with that button. Coming up to settings, as I said earlier, you have your emergency charging button. It's not recommended to use this all the time as this is gonna put more wear on the battery, but if you need to top off the battery very quickly, just go ahead and turn that on. Without this emergency charging, I got about 900 to 1000 watts of charging. And then when I turned that on, that's when it bumped it up to 1500 watts. And then you also have charging settings. And in here you have fast charging mode and quiet charging mode. At quiet charging mode, it's gonna charge slower, but at a much more quiet level. Most of the time, it's probably better to leave it on fast charging mode, but if you're close to the power station or maybe you're sleeping in the same room, that's where it's gonna be better to use that quiet charging mode instead. You have battery settings, which is not something I've seen on any other power station. So first off, you have the option to fully use the power station. This is gonna charge and drain it from zero to 100. And then you have battery saving mode, which is gonna extend the battery life by not completely charging it and also not completely draining it. And right down here, it does show you a graph of what that does. So on fully used mode, you can see it's going to charge to 100, drain to a zero, and it's going to start charging every time it goes down to 99. But if you set it on battery saving mode, it's only going to drain down to 15%, and then it's only going to charge to a maximum of 85%, and then it won't start charging until it reaches 80%. In general, this is supposed to be a lot better for batteries. If you're someone that owns an electric car, or Tesla, or something like that, you will know this is a common practice. So if you do want to get longer battery life out of the power station, I do recommend leaving this on. As you can see right here, it says it extends the battery life by approximately 30%. And then of course, you do have the option to set it back to full charging and discharge if you do need it for a higher power situation. You have energy saving mode, and this is where it'll automatically shut off when no load is detected. And you can set this from anywhere from two hours, 24 hours, or even never. Auto off time, it'll turn off the power station. Again, two to 24 hours or never. And that's about it for the app. Simple, but very easy to use and navigate as well. So I know a lot of people get nervous when it comes to storing large batteries like this in their house, but rest assured you don't have anything to worry about as this does have what they call Charge Shield 2.0. This has 62 different protection mechanisms that protect your devices and the power station from over voltage, short circuits, temperatures, and many other things as well. Besides this, when you purchase directly from Jackery, you also get a very good five year warranty to keep you covered in case you do have any problems. Overall, this is definitely a solid power station. It performs well, it has a good usable capacity, and it also includes a very good warranty as well. So overall, if you happen to be shopping for a mid-size power station, I would highly recommend taking a look at this one here, which again is the Explorer 1000 V2 from Jackery. From November 6th to December 8th, Jackery is actually running a Black Friday sale with savings up to 50% off. So if you are interested in this power station, this is definitely the best time to get it. If you would like to purchase or get more information, I'll also put the link in the description as well. All right, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.